Hi, welcome along to another video. This time we're going to look at an appraisal of cloud seeding as a means of increasing precipitation. This is from the Smithsonian report for 1951, so 71 years ago, and it's by Henry G. Houghton of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. We'll go through the first two paragraphs in the report and then touch on a couple of little bits from the rest of the report. We'll go through the first pieces as it gives a good idea of how people were thinking 70 years ago, what was possible 70 years ago and what an independent from the industry observer says. The tremendous economic implications of the artificial control of rainfall have led to over-optimistic statements in the public press and to ill-advised commercial applications of rainmaking techniques by persons who do not possess the necessary technical qualifications. These events have been viewed with concern by all responsible meteorologists. So 70 years ago the media were playing their part. It continues, it is unfortunate that much of the money which has been spent by public and private agencies in an effort to increase precipitation in specific areas has contributed so little to our scientific understanding of the processes involved. So here we have to keep in mind, in 1951, that was four years after the silver iodide process of weather modification was brought into the wider world, let's say. So the author is writing from a perspective where he states without adequate scientific information it is impossible to determine with any assurance the economic value of cloud seeding or to prescribe the most favourable conditions and procedures. As in the case of all scientific research the several groups and individuals who are working in this field have criticised one another's experiments and interpretations. So infighting, by the looks of it, this normal scientific interchange has been unduly accentuated by the glare of publicity which has caused some of those concerned to be more dogmatic than is justifiable in view of the present incomplete information. Now that could almost be something you're reading about David Keith. I'm sure a few of you are thinking. In the view of the public, the meteorological world has been divided into believers and non-believers. Also sounds quite familiar. This is an unfortunate and ridiculous concept. The fact is simply that the information at hand is not sufficient to permit an unequivocal conclusion regarding the possibilities of the artificial control of precipitation. Well, there are definitely believers and non-believers out there still, except the difference is now we do have the information at hand after 70 years of that type of weather modification that was being developed in the late 1940s and early 1950s. In 1951, it was clear that there was a clear understanding of the chemical effect, the techniques needed, and this is demonstrated with this statement about silver iodide and why it is used is because of the dimensional similarity of the crystal lattices of silver iodide and ice. So moisture can attach itself to silver iodide much like it would a particle that would form ice. And there was a clear understanding of that in 1951. They knew what they were doing. In a vast majority of the tests, there has been visible evidence of the transformation of supercooled clouds to ice crystals. So again, 70 years ago, there was clear evidence that what they were doing was having an effect. Next, we are getting into the territory of what many of us might have been mistaking as harp clouds. So the first piece, nucleation of stratiform clouds often leads to the production of valleys or canyons. Looks very much like those harp skies. The weather modification can create valleys or canyons. 
apparently, as stated in 1951. Holes seem to occur most often when the cloud deck is relatively thin. So up until about six months ago, I used to think those holes were created by harp. There's the potential they're created by weather modification because they're mentioned over 30 years before the first harp facility was developed. And we'll come back to that in a bit. So again, to confirm, there was a clear understanding of what was going on. It is considered that both the laboratory and a flight experiments prove beyond any reasonable doubt that dry ice and silver iodide will both convert a supercooled water cloud to an ice crystal cloud. The only necessary condition is that the cloud temperature be a few degrees below the freezing point. Quantitative estimates of the number of nuclei produced by silver iodide generators have been made, but it is nearly impossible to estimate their concentration in the cloud after release. Atmospheric seeding experiments have resulted in the formation of precipitation elements with a wide range of seeding rates. So it's a bit unpredictable. It is concluded that unless the cloud is continuously replenished, the precipitation released by seeding will be very light and the cloud will be partially or completely dissipated by the removal of its water. As what's said about solar radiation management, that you have to do it continuously. If you stop, everything collapses. So you just have to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. If you want the rains to continue. Okay, so coming back to the harp thing. To create um, thermodynamic effects in the cloud, to start the cloud off with becoming more active than what it was, getting all the bits and pieces working so that they control the cloud in the way they want to control it. The author says it is important to note that this heating occurs only in the supercooled portion of the cloud and that the temperature rise ordinarily increases with elevation. Heat rises. To be really effective, the heating should occur in the lower part of the cloud and below the cloud base, which for me shows the usage for HARP as an ionospheric heater. And it brings us around about to one question that can be asked. We know weather modification has been around for a long time and we know it was mostly based on clouds that existed. Then from the 90s onwards, we seem to have seen the creation of clouds, what some people call chemtrails, some people call it geoengineering, solar radiation management. But is that the actual creation of clouds which wasn't being done before in the 1950s? In the 1950s, it was all about modifying clouds that already existed. So the next step from that then is to create the clouds and then modify those chemtrails. If you need to heat the base of that cloud so that you can create the more effective thermodynamic effects at the cloud base then you will need an ionospheric heater to do that which is what harp facilities are. Question worth asking it all ties in. We'll leave that there. Hope you found that information from 1951 useful. Thank you for watching. Take care. Look after yourselves. And see you next time.